welcome dear children to the new chapter chapter 4 moving charges and magnetic field in this chapter we will be studying about magnetic field and the behavior of charges in the presence of magnetic field actually both electricity and magnetism have been known for more than 2000 years but it was only about 200 years ago that is in 1820 that it was realized that they were intimately related and the relation between the electricity and magnetism was found by a Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted during a lecture demonstration in 1820. He noticed that a current in a straight wire caused a noticeable deflection in a nearby magnetic compass needle. He investigated this phenomenon further. This momentous discovery linking a magnetic field with an electric current for the first time was the beginning of our understanding of the origin of magnet. Till that time magnetism was a separate branch of physics as electro electricity. But after this discovery this relation between magnetism and electricity became evident and the branch called electromagnetism was evolved. Nowadays, actually, the three branches of physics, electricity, magnetism and optics are coined together and we have a branch of physics called as electrodynamics. In the simple experiment carried out by Ørsted in 1820, several compass needles are placed in a horizontal plane near a long wire as shown in figure. When there is no current in the wire, all needles point in the same direction that is in the direction of Earth's magnetic field. When the wire carries a strong steady current, however, the needles are deflected in directions tangent to the circle. So this deflection in the compass needles when the current passes through the straight wire is a strong evidence for the magnetic field produced by the current flowing through the conductor. Now this diagram again shows the evidence for magnetic field produced by a current carrying conductor. If we sprinkle iron filings around surrounding the wire, it is found that these iron filings, they align themselves in concentric circles having the wire at the center. So we conclude that the current carrying conductor, straight current carrying conductor produce a magnetic field whose direction is along concentric circles. And if the current is in two, that means the direction of magnetic field also is different uh, depending on the direction of current. So if the current is into the page, so here that into symbol, it shows into, into the page or into the surface, the direction is as shown, the concentric circles. And in the other case, that means if the current is out of the page, the direction is as shown. So here we can apply right hand thumb rule to find the direction of magnetic field. Anyway, these things we will be discussing later in, the, in this chapter itself. So in our textbook also this experiment is mentioned and this is the diagram from our textbook. So this also shows that magnetic field around a straight current carrying conductor. So one point to be noted hereafter in this chapter we will be using the notations dot and cross to show the directions of either the magnetic field or the current. The dot symbol shows either the current or magnetic field which is out of the plane and the into symbol shows the current or magnetic field which is into the plane. So this is a notation which we will be following in this chapter. Keep that point in mind. So, what we are discussing is about magnetic field. So, what is magnetic field? Magnetic field is something which is produced by 
moving charges we can say of course magnetic field is there surrounding uh, the bar magnet as we usually experience okay but here we are discussing the magnetic field produced by moving charges or current okay the other magnetism natural magnetism related to bar magnet and all we will be discussing in the next chapter so let's discuss in terms of moving charges so we already discussed in the first two chapters that is electric field is produced by stationary charges so stationary charges produce electric field whereas moving charges they produce magnetic field too so a stationary charge cannot produce a magnetic field only moving charges can produce magnetic field and it is experimentally found that this magnetic field is a vector quantity and it obey the principle of superposition that means magnetic field of several sources is the vector sum of magnetic field due to each individual source so magnetic field is a vector quantity which is the same as electric field the basic properties of magnetic field are identical to that of electric field okay and it is found to obey principle of superposition also so now we will define this magnetic field in terms of force experienced by a charged particle in a magnetic field so from experiments it is seen that a stationary charged particle does not interact with static magnetic field so pay attention we are mentioning the interaction between charged particle and magnetic field so it is seen that a stationary charged particle will not interact with a static magnetic field but when a charged particle is moving through a magnetic field a magnetic force is found to act on that charged particle or the charged particle experiences a force when it moves through a magnetic field and this force has its maximum value when the charge moves in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field and decreases in value at other angles and it becomes zero when moves along the direction of magnetic field these things are experimentally found from these experimental observations lorentz formulated a law which is known as lorentz force law or lorentz force equation and that lorentz force equation gives the magnetic force that means the force experienced by a charge a moving charge in a magnetic field that means a charge which is moving in a magnetic field and that magnetic lorentz force is given by the equation f magnetic is equal to q into v cross b where q is the charge of the charged particle v is the velocity of the charged particle and b is the magnetic field so here v and b are vector quantities this is the magnetic lorentz force the total lorentz force that means when a charged particle is moving in the presence of both electric field and magnetic field due to electric field the charged particle will experience a force and due to magnetic field the charged particle will experience force so the total charged uh, total force experienced by the charged particle is given by f total is equal to f electric plus f magnetic that means force due to electric field plus force due to magnetic field that is equal to q e plus q into v cross b that q e part we have already studied in first chapter and this q v cross b that is the magnetic lorentz force so the total force experienced by the charged particle in the presence of both electric and magnetic field is given by q into e plus v cross b where e is the electric field and b is the magnetic field so this equation gives the total lorentz force okay the previous equation that is f magnetic magnetic lorentz force is given by q v cross b so that equation gives the magnetic force or the force experienced by the charged particle in the presence of a magnetic field
since the expression for magnetic Lorentz force is Q V cross B, we can say that the direction of Lorentz force is perpendicular to the plane containing V and B or it is perpendicular to both V and B. That means the force experienced by the charged particle will be in a direction perpendicular to the directions of V and B or simply we can say it is perpendicular to the plane containing the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. So, to find the direction of magnetic that means magnetic force we can use two rules. That is first one is right hand thumb rule and the second one is Fleming's left hand rule. Let us discuss both of them. So to find the direction of force experienced by a charged particle in a magnetic field we can use right hand thumb rule. So how to apply right hand thumb rule is this. Suppose this green pen shows the direction of velocity v and blue pen shows the direction of magnetic field and this is the angle between the two we call it as theta okay so to find the direction of uh, force experienced by the charged particle you have to stretch or you have to curl the fingers of your right hand from the direction of velocity to the direction of uh, what magnetic field then at that time what is the direction shown by the thumb that direction shown by the thumb gives you the direction of force experienced so curl the fingers of right hand from the direction of velocity to the direction of magnetic field then what is the direction shown by the thumb that gives you the direction of force experienced by the charged particle this is applicable in all cases but when this type of situation arises that means when the direction of velocity and direction of magnetic field are perpendicular to each other we use another rule called Fleming's left hand rule. In Fleming's left hand rule you have to stretch the three fingers of your left hand in three mutually perpendicular directions like this you have to keep in three mutually perpendicular directions. So the thing is this uh, thumb, forefinger and middle finger you have to stretch. Now which all vector quantities are shown by the three fingers? This thumb shows the direction of force forefinger shows the direction of magnetic field and the middle finger shows the direction of motion of the charged particle. So the thing is this in order to keep them in order we use a shortcut father, mother, child. I repeat father, mother, child. Father F stands for force, mother M stands for magnetic field and child C stands for charge that means direction of motion of the charged particle. So take care when we say the charged particle we have to consider the direction of motion of positively charged particle. So if it is negatively charged particle first you have to find the direction for positively charged particle then take just opposite of that. That will give you the uh, direction of force experienced by a negatively charged particle. So uh, by stretching the three fingers in these three directions like this you have to rotate it that means as per the given situation in what all directions you want you have to change the orientation as per the given situation okay then find the direction of force or magnetic field or direction of motion of the charged particle as per the question so when you change the orientation no the angle between the three uh, three fingers should not change without changing the angle between the three fingers you have to change the orientation of your fingers or uh, orientation of the hand as such without changing the directions of the fingers then apply in the situation you are saying no I am not changing the directions of the fingers the hand as such is changed in that way only you have to do. This shows the direction of force by using right hand thumb rule. So as we said the you have to sweep the fingers uh, 
of right hand from V to B so that the angle traced by your fingers it is small. See you can sweep the fingers in the opposite direction also but you have to curl your fingers so that theta is small. In that way you have to curl. Then what is the direction shown by the thumb that gives you the direction of force. So here F shows the direction that F is given as the force. And second diagram shows, this diagram shows the case with a negative charge. So first diagram it is for a positive charge. No problem at all for a positive charge. While doing with the negative charge, first of all we have to think about positive charge. Okay, so in that way you find the direction of force and take just opposite direction. So in the second diagram we have to find uh, what first for positive charge. So positive charge you will be getting in upward direction, the direction of force. And since the charge is negative you have to take the direction of force just opposite direction. That is how we get the opposite direction as the direction of force. So this is how we can use the right hand thumb rule to find the direction of force. Now Fleming's left hand rule we have already demonstrated. So uh, thumb stands for force, uh, four finger stands for magnetic field and the middle finger stands for electric current. So here one more uh, shortcut is given EMF. E stands for electric current, M stands for magnetic field and F stands for word force and take them in anti-clockwise direction of the fingers of left hand that's what they have given starting from the uh, means middle finger anti-clockwise direction anti-clockwise direction means backward so you start from uh, what middle finger so e m f like that one more uh, shortcut i have told father mother child father mother child it starts from thumb in the clockwise direction Okay, so which one you are finding easy, you can use that. So if you are using father, mother, child, you have to start from the thumb. Then in clockwise direction, you continue. So father, mother, child, like this, father, mother, child, like that it will be coming. So you can take the direction or EMF in the opposite direction, starting with the middle finger. So whichever you are finding easy, you follow that method. Now we will discuss more about magnetic Lorentz force. It is in terms of this magnetic Lorentz force we are going to define magnetic field. So this magnetic Lorentz force is a vector quantity and its magnitude is given by Q into Vb sin theta where V is the magnitude of velocity and B is the magnitude of magnetic field and theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. Okay, so that magnitude is QVB sin theta. Now, we, we, we can say that if the charged particle is at rest, that means for a stationary charged particle, we can say V is equal to zero then force will be equal to zero. That means a charged particle uh, which is stationary will not experience a force in the presence of magnetic field. So only moving particles, moving charged particles can experience a force in the presence of magnetic field. Now this force will be equal to zero if theta equal to zero or 180 degree. That means if the charged particle, if it is moving, either parallel or anti-parallel to the direction of magnetic field then the magnetic force will be equal to zero and finally if theta equal to 90 that means if the charge moves perpendicular to the magnetic field then the force will be maximum. So maximum force is given by when theta equal to 90 degree sine theta is 1 so the maximum Lorentz force is given by Q V B where Q is the charge V is the speed or velocity and B is the magnitude of magnetic field. So this much we can conclude from the expression for magnetic Lorentz force. From the expression for magnitude of force acting on a charged particle in a magnetic field we have F is equal to Q V B sin theta 
it is seen that the strength of the magnetic force on the particle is proportional to the magnitude of the charge Q, magnitude of velocity V and the strength of the external magnetic field B and sine of the angle between the directions of V and B. So, from that expression we can write an equation for B. So, what is B? B is equal to F by QV sin theta. So, this is a temporary definition for the magnetic field that magnetic field B is equal to F divided by QV sin theta. Here F is in Newton, Q is in Coulomb and V in meter per second. Therefore, the SI unit of magnetic field will be uh, either Weber per meter square or Newton per Coulomb meter square per second okay or it is the same as Newton per ampere meter and actually those units are renamed as Tesla. So, we call it as actually Tesla. So, Tesla is the SI unit of magnetic field and it is represented by capital letter T. So, actually 1 Tesla is equal to 1 Weber per meter square or it is the same as Newton per Coulomb meter per second or it is the same as Newton per ampere meter. So, that is the SI unit of magnetic field and this Tesla is a bigger unit of magnetic field actually and this so in the, because of that we use smaller unit and one such smaller unit is a CGS unit and that is called Gauss. Gauss represented by capital letter G, how Tesla and Gauss are related. 1 Tesla is equal to 10 raised to 4 Gauss or 1 Gauss is equal to 10 raised to minus 4 Tesla. So, this is a commonly used unit for magnetic field even if the SI unit is Tesla, uh, most common unit is Gauss. So, 1 Gauss is equal to 10 raised to minus 4 Tesla or 1 Tesla equal to 10 raised to 4 Gauss. This table shows the magnitudes of magnetic field in variety of physical situations. So, you can go through the table surface of neutron star 10 raised to 8 Tesla. So, it is somewhat big magnetic field. A typical large field in a laboratory it is 1 Tesla. Okay, And due to a small bar magnet the field is 10 raised to minus 2 Tesla and on earth's surface due to earth magnetic field the magnetic field is of the order 10 raised to minus 5 Tesla and human nerve fiber it has got a magnetic field 10 raised to minus 10 Tesla so very weak magnetic field it is and interstellar space it has got a magnetic field of strength 10 raised to minus 12 tesla which is very very weak so this is this is what i mean the usual magnetic field they are of very small value that is why we use goes as a common unit now we will discuss one problem related to this magnetic lorentz force that is example 4 2 if the magnetic field is parallel to the positive y axis and the charged particle is moving along the positive x axis, which way would the Lorentz force be for an electron and a proton? So, here one charged particle is positively charged and the second case it is negatively charged. So, we will be starting with the positive charge because it is very easy to uh, say about positive charge. Okay, so our expression for uh, magnetic Lorentz force, you know, it is F is equal to Q into V cross B. Both V and B are vectors, you know. In this given question, you know, the magnetic field is parallel to positive Y axis. Means B can be written as, vector B can be written as B into, it is in positive Y axis. So, J cap because Y direction, the unity vector is which one? J cap and the charged particle is moving along positive X axis. So, vector V can be written as what? V into uh, I cap because it is moving along positive X direction. Okay. So, B and V are simply what? This B and V are simply the magnitudes of magnetic field and this velocity vector. So, the force acting vector F will be 
um, or the magnitude or uh, um, sorry the direction also we have to find so f is equal to for positively charged particle we are finding first so that is equal to q into v cross b so actually v and b the magnitudes are there so we can write it as v i cross b j v i cross b j so v and p we can take outside so our expression for force becomes f is equal to vector f is equal to q v b into i cross j so actually the magnitude of force is q v b and the psi cross j gives the direction you know what is psi cross j the cross product we have studied last year cross product of orthogonal unit vector i cross j is k so vector f becomes q v b into k cap so k cap means what is the direction of magnet this magnetic force the direction of magnetic force is along positive z direction so that is the question you are asked to find the direction of Lorentz force so here in the case of proton the positive charge the force is acting in positive x not positive x positive z direction because it is k cap okay now if the charge is negative what you have to do the same way we have to find for a positive charge then you just take the opposite direction so we here we have already found for a positive charge we found it to be in positive z direction positive z direction so for an electron what will be the direction just opposite just opposite means what negative z direction so electron will experience a magnetic Lorentz force in the negative z direction so that is the answer for that question okay for an electron it will be along negative z axis and for proton it will be along positive z axis so this is how you have to do that problem okay so only this much for today thank you